Win big with new DRF All Access Pass Performances. With one best in class product, you now get all three pass performance formats. Go to drf.com and use coupon code one free PP for a free single card today. Hi everyone, David Aragona here, taking a look at one of a couple of Kentucky Derby prep races this weekend in this Timeform US Road to the Kentucky Derby Series. The 100 point to the winner prep races do kick off on Saturday. We've got the Louisiana Derby at Fairgrounds. In this video, though, we're going to take a look at the Jeff Ruby Stakes Grade 3 event going the nine furlongs for three-year-olds at Turfway Park on Saturday, race 12 on their card. And there is a large full field signed on for this race. 12 runners will participate. There are actually 14 entered for this race, two currently stuck on the also eligible list, those being the 13 Circle P and the number 14 Triple Espresso. At least one of those is likely to draw into this race because my colleague Marcus Hirsch did report that the number five Agate Road, who is one of two Todd Pletcher trainees entered in this race, is going to scratch from this spot to instead run in the Louisiana Derby on this same Saturday. So uh, Todd Pletcher only going with a Triple Espresso espresso in this race but that horse does need one scratch still to draw into the main body of the field it is a wide open race horses coming from multiple directions and this race being run on the all-weather track at turfway park surface is a real question for a lot of these horses because many of them are making switches from turf to synthetic or potentially even dirt to synthetic so we're going to see how these horses handle the turfway surface on saturday to get a sense of how this race might be run through the early stages let's take a look at the time form you pace projector for this race and it does appear that there is a fair amount of speed signed on in here the number three lucky jeremy definitely a horse that wants to be forwardly placed from the inside he is one of those who will be trying the synthetic for the first time after switching over from dirt the number 12 towards the outside west saratoga another horse who wants to be forwardly placed i guess a wild card in this race is the number 11 baytown chatterbox that's a horse that's stretching out from a four and a half furlong race at Charlestown. So we could potentially see speed from him. And even the number six, Northern Flame, another horse making that dirt to synthetic switch, has shown speed in some prior starts. You'll notice that the horse that actually got the LP flag on this pace projector is Agate Road. Like I said, he is expected to scratch from this race. So some other horses who could be charging late include the number 14, Triple Espresso, who is not shown on this pace projector, but does possess a potent late kick. And even horse Versus like the number 10 endlessly who I th don't, do think has the second highest time for us late pace rating in this field well let's go through these runners in post position order a lot of them to get through and we can skip through some of them fairly quickly including a horse like the number one freedom principle um he has been successful on all weather before winning over the, the, the synthetic surface at Gulfstream park a couple of times towards the end of his two-year-old season however all synthetic surfaces are not created equal and we've seen following turf weight over the past few months that horses switching from Gulfstream to Turfway or Woodbine to Turfway or other synthetic surfaces to Turfway, one synthetic surface form doesn't always translate to that Turfway surface. So we'll see if Freedom Principle can be successful here. I just asked some class questions about him. He beat much weaker fields in those prior victories at Gulfstream, was not really competitive against Stakes Company his last couple of starts on the turf. So we'll see if he can be successful switching back to the synthetic here, but not sure he's quite good enough. The number two is Dancing Groom, and he is one of many in this field trying the synthetic surface for the first time, switching over from the dirt. And he's another one that I just have to question the current form. He's coming back on relatively short rest, having competed just three weeks ago in the Fountain of Youth. The pace of that race didn't really set up for him. It was more dominated towards the front end, but he was way out the back door early, never got involved. Similar situation to back in the Holy Bull, where the pace was extremely slow and obviously didn't suit him. But again, he never really got involved in that race. His one claim to fame is finishing third in the grade one champagne as a two-year-old, but he's never really built on that form since then. So we'll see if the, the synthetic surface makes any difference. He is by Vino Rosso, who in a very small sample has been winning with 15% of his, his synthetic route starters. The number three is Lucky Jeremy. He is that horse that is shown on the lead on the pace projector. And he did step up with a much improved speed figure last time when finishing third in the grade three Sunland Park Derby behind Stronghold, one of the horses that is on the Derby watch that Brad Free and I are tracking each week. So a good form line coming out of that race for Lucky Jeremy. He did step up from uh, some slower figs that he earned in his prior dirt races, but he did show talent early on, breaking his maiden at Churchill Downs before stretching out to the two turns in New Mexico. 
Mexico recently. While the, synth the switch to synthetic is a big question mark for this horse, his trainer, William Morey, does have a lot of success on synthetic surfaces. He's having a strong meet of Turfway so far, winning at nearly 25%. So, and he's got a local rider on board in Gerardo Corrales. So those are all positive signs for Lucky Jeremy. We'll just see how fast this pace ultimately turns out to be for him. The number four is Noted, and I think I misspoke. Todd Pletcher actually entered three horses in this race. I sort of forgot about Noted. He'll go with two as long as Triple Espresso draws in. This horse, he's been um, successful on both turf and dirt, winning on each of those surfaces, has not yet tried a synthetic surface. But one thing I do look for when seeing horses that are trying synthetic for the first time is ones that have shown that surface versatility. And Noted definitely has that. So I'm not too worried about the surface switch for him getting on the all weather for the first time. What I am a little concerned about with Noted is that he hasn't really stepped forward from his best speed figures as a two-year-old. He earned that 99 time for best speed figure, just barely losing the grade two bourbon at Keeneland back in October. And since then, he's failed to top that number. He did get close to it, getting a 98 when he won the Pulpit Stakes 2 back at Gulfstream Park, but he got a very favorable pace set up and race flow that day. So I'm just not sure that Noted really stacks up with this field from a class and speed figure standpoint. We'll skip over the number five, Agate Road, who is unlikely to run here and move on to the number six, Northern Flame. We'll take a look at his most recent start in the Grade 2 Rebel Stakes, where both he and Woodcourt, who we'll get to in just a second, both highlighted here, finished behind Timberlake, who is generally regarded as being one of the top contenders at this early stage moving on towards the Kentucky Derby. And I thought both Northern Flame and Woodcourt ran pretty well in this race. Northern Flame got a good trip, stalking the pace. It was a moderate pace, and he stayed on fairly well at the end to be third. That's Woodcourt, who was right behind him, uh, following him to the finish line to be fourth. He got a wider trip. As for Northern in flame he's one that's making that switch from dirt to synthetic but he does have some pedigree clues that suggest that synthetic could be okay for him we've seen his sire flame away get a, a winners in on a variety of surfaces he's been successful as a turf sire has had some cursory success also as a synthetic sire and uh, flame away was a horse who was versatile in terms of surface during his racing career so you would imagine that northern flame is not going to have that much trouble transferring his form to synthetic and he's got some solid form that 110 time form with speed figure for his last start that is tied for the highest figure that anybody in this race has ever earned so you could argue coming in here as long as he handles the surface he might be one of the horses to beat in this race the number seven is Woodcourt, and we just looked at him in that replay that we showed for Northern Flame. He was the one that was following that horse home to finish fourth in the Rebel, and you could argue he actually got the slightly tougher trip that day because he was breaking from post 12, was three wide around both turns in a race where I think saving ground was an advantage. We saw the runner-up common defense really save ground around both turns to beat both of those these rivals uh, to finish second that day. And Woodcourt, he was making his second start off the claim for trainer Cipriano Contreras in that Rebel Stakes, and it seems like he's really improved for this barn. He won first off the claim in that optional claiming event where he got a very good trip and a clever ride from Manny Esquivel that day, but still showed a lot of grit to win slicing between horses in the stretch and what was a blanket finish across the wire. And one thing to note about this horse is that he is one of the few horses in this race that has a win over the all-weather going, and actually the only horse that earned his all-weather win over this Turfway Park surface. He did that three back in that December 22nd optional claiming race where he was claimed, got familiar with uh, rider Luan Machado that day. And if you watch Turfway Park through this winter and just spring meet, Luan Machado rides the Turfway Park surface better than anybody. So it's definitely a feather in this horse's cap that he's got that rider aboard once again and going out for a barn that has also had plenty of success at this Turfway meet. So Woodcourt could be a contender in this race at a square price. The number eight is Otello, and he's an interest, interesting horse making this dirt to synthetic switch because when you look at his pedigree, he actually has plenty of turf and synthetic influences in the pedigree. While Curlin, as a racehorse, was not so successful racing over synthetic, he had that high-profile loss as the favorite in the Breeders' Cup Classic on synthetic. He has had some success as a sire, especially in synthetic route races. And the Dan Isabella Sings, she was much more of a turf horse, but we've seen horses that have turf breeding and turf 
of inclination, do very well on synthetic surfaces. So it makes sense that Otella was being targeted for this race as he makes that surface switch away from dirt for the first time. This horse showed a lot of promise on debut when he was a gritty winner, showing a lot of professionalism to get up to win by a neck at Aqueduct back in November of last year. He won the Mucho Macho Man after that, regressed a little bit from a speed figure standpoint, and then he was disappointing last time in the Holy Bull, but I feel like his connections made a bit of a tactical error in that race because Otello actually broke very alertly, and his connections uh, apparently instructed Luis Saez to take him off the pace. It's not really Luis Saez's style to give away position that he's got at the start to raid a horse, but he did that last time in the Holy Bull. It just kind of backfired because that race was dominated on the front end. Nobody really had a chance to make up ground. We'll see if Atello could be more successful and run a faster speed figure switching over to synthetic surface, but you could definitely be optimistic about that based on the pedigree. The number nine is Seize the Gray. We'll take a look at his most recent start when he was a winner over the dirt, going the mile in a 16th distance at Oaklawn Park. And he shows some dirt termination to win this race, battling back between horses to get the victory. This his first two-turn triumph after he had broken his maiden, going six and a half furlongs over a sloppy track at Saratoga during his two-year-old season. Also, this his first start off a layoff, so you could potentially project some improvement as he makes his second start back in his return. And he did earn a career your best speed figure last time that 106 stacks up pretty well against this field like many other he's going to get a class test in here because he really wasn't competitive against some better two-year-olds that he faced in stakes company last year but he did take that speed figure step forward last time and he's another one while he's never tried a surface other than dirt there definitely is surface versatility in his pedigree his sire arrogate has gotten 17 percent winners in synthetic route races if you look up his statistics in dear formulator sire stats and his dam she handled both the dirt and the turf during her racing career so there is some hope that this horse can transfer his form to synthetic the number 10 is endlessly we'll take a look at his most recent win over an all-weather course at Golden Gate when he took down the El Camino Real Derby. And I think this recent victory and his general record of going four for five so far in his career is why Endlessly was installed as the five to two morning line favorite in this Jeff Ruby stakes. I do have some questions about his quality because he wasn't beating the strongest field in this El Camino Real Derby. We've seen some horses since come back to at least confirm the speed figure. Third place finisher Guy Named Joe is actually the best run back so far. He came back to just miss in a turf stakes recently at Santa Anita. So that bolsters the form a little bit. And this horse did show decent form as a two-year-old. He won three consecutive races on the turf. Again, again, somewhat suspect competition. But it's not like he was disgraced when he was eighth, only beaten three and a half lengths in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Turf last year. So endlessly has competitive form coming in. You just have to decide if you would want to take a short price on a horse whose best form does seem fairly exposed on the synthetic compared to some others in this race. The number 11 is Baytown Shatterbox, like I mentioned towards the start. I guess he's a potential pace player in this race, stretching out from that four and a half furlong sprint race at Charlestown last time, but it's just hard to make a real co coherent case for him based on his prior form, has never tried the synthetic. His only uh, route race so far going the two turns was really a disaster at Keeneland three back in the British futurity. So don't really view him as much of a contender in this race. The number 12 is West Saratoga. He's coming out of a third place finish in the grade three Sam F. Davis on the dirt at Tampa Bay Downs. And he's had plenty of experience, nine starts already in his career, though he's never tried a surface other than dirt. So he's one of many in this field who will be trying the synthetic for the first time. From a pedigree standpoint, there are some influences, but maybe not quite as convincing as some others in this race. He is a horse that does like to do his best running when he is in a tactical forward position so he's going to have to work at a trip from this far outside post position if he's going to be successful in here but he does feel like a horse whose form is at least moving in the right direction as he now makes his third start back off a layoff as a three-year-old the number 13 is circle p he is the first runner on the also eligible list though if agate road does scratch as expected he will draw into this field um he's one who's going to have to improve a little bit from a speed figure standpoint his top number of a 96 is a cut below some of the other contenders in this race though he did earn that towards the end of his two-year-old season and now he's making his second start off a layoff as a three-year-old did close fairly well last time in the miracle wood pick it up for third at laurel though he did get a fast pace to close into that day and you can see as a closer in his past performances he's a horse who has benefited from race blows a few times he's gotten red color coded pace figures in all three of his most recent starts so that definitely has helped him and he's only been able to one win one of those races so we'll see if he can make the step up in class he could get another 
fast pace to close into on Saturday, but has to do it against tougher competition on an unfamiliar surface. And then rounding out the field is the number 14 triple espresso. Like I said, he's probably going to need one more scratch to draw into this race, but he is one of those that will actually be making the switch from the turf to the synthetic. Most in this field are switching from dirt to synth. He's one of the confirmed turf horses trying the synthetic for the first time in this race, going out for Todd Pletcher. And based on pedigree, there is some evidence on the dam side, at least, that he's supposed to handle it because he is a half-brother to a horse named Wyattstown, who is a multiple stakes winner on synthetic. On the flip side, though, Omaha Beach, in a relatively small sample, is 0 for 27 with his synthetic starter so far. So that sire has not had much success on all weather yet. But like I said, he was a first crop sire last year, so still a small sample with Omaha Beach. As far as the form of Triple Espresso grows, um, he ran very well to break his maiden in his fourth attempt to bat, making an eye-catching run from off the pace to win going a mile in the 16th at Gulfstream. Stepped up to Stakes Company last time in the Colonel Liam, and I actually highlighted his trip on the Horses to Watch show that I do on DRF's YouTube channel because he did not have an ideal journey that day, was towards the back early behind a very slow pace. You see all of those blue color-coded time form US pace figures, and he really never had a chance to get into the race that day given that negative race that uh disadvantageous race flow and the fact that he was covering so much more ground than other rivals so i think he's better than his recent form makes it seem and if he handles the synthetic surface and gets the right pace setup potentially triple espresso could be dangerous in this race at a square price well, let's take a look at my picks for this race. And I just wanted to find some horses that I think are going to be square prices. I put the number seven Wood Court on top. He's eight to one on the morning line. I think that's a fair price on a horse who has that prior victory over the Turfway Park surface. And seems like he's really improved in two starts since getting claimed by Cipriano Contreras, connections who do well at Turfway Park. I think he ran deceptively well in that Rebel Stakes last time out. So he's my top pick. But I'm also interested in that number 14 that I was just talking about triple espresso he's definitely one that i want to include in my wagers if he does get that one additional scratch to draw into this field but my top pick is the number seven woodcourt in the grade three jeff ruby stakes on saturday at turfway park good luck after playing the races this weekend